Hey, what's going on, everybody? I have a party I'm going to be having at my house here in just under two weeks. So I got to get everything knocked out and done uh, as far as inside the house and outside the house. So I have two more doors that need to be finished whitewashing, uh, cabinet doors that we're going to go ahead and throw on and just let that be. So what I'm going to show you is I have already sanded these two small doors down, did all the paint thinner, uh, paint remover, and got the majority of the paint off. Where we're, we're going to start right now is where I left off, and that is go ahead and removing the, uh, the very small little bit of paint that I have left and then get right into the whitewashing. All right, let's end it. So after you have done your sanding, you're kind of left with these hard areas right in here that uh, just are not very easy to get to. Now you could absolutely just go and paint over this and you know, you would probably not notice it very much until you get to maybe places like this that kind of have chips off, you know, they're sort of like chipping. But uh, when you get to places like this and you kind of see some of the staining there and you can see the staining there, these used to be uh, brown. These used to be stained brown. And so the sanding that I've done not only has been to remove the paint, well, actually, well, let me rephrase that, the the paint removal has been done using paint remover <laughs> and so a paint stripper to go ahead and get this off um, but when it came when I got it down to where I can basically just sand off the rest I was taking going as easy as possible as I could um, but while also going deep enough in order to get out most of the stain so you can see there's still some places here I know the sun is a little misleading um, since it goes into shade under my patio covering um, but uh, this little staining here is where is where the previous brown stain was. And then on this one, you can see how the grooves were deep enough uh, just to where even the gray on the top wasn't being removed. Um, so what I like to do is at this stage, I go ahead and I take my Dremel um, and I just lightly go into some of these places, not necessarily trying to get every single last scrap of paint up, but just at least getting the majority of it so that uh, when I paint over it, um, basically it makes it so the paint that is left is unnoticeable because the whitewashing will wash over that too. So these are the two doors we're going to be going ahead and whitewashing today, finishing the paint remover. It is just an absolute beautiful day out here in San Diego. We're like low to mid-70s uh, in the uh, beginning of June. So we're going to go ahead and do this uh, project outside. Let me go ahead and show you some of the details on how we're going to approach today. That's the question, then you said it Always saying, things you're regretting Can't erase the steps we're taking Can't go back to the time and place we met I was so upset But you made it all better So if you do choose to do some of the fine details like I am with the uh, Dremel I uh, recommend having a few of these wired discs on hand because you will go through them. Uh, they do last a pretty good amount of time. I was actually just finishing up uh, uh, the rest of the wire that was on the last one. Um, but uh, you will, depending on how big your project is, go through quite a few of these.
All right, so now that we got the parts all sanded down, I used 150 grit to go ahead and uh, just make it smooth to the touch. And I went ahead and uh, used some cloth, uh, some paper towels um, to go ahead and uh, remove all the extra grit. Before I actually go to uh, do the whitewash, and I'm going to get a microfiber cloth to go ahead and remove all the different, uh, like it left some fuzz and everything on it. So I'm going to use a microfiber cloth to remove the rest. But in the meantime, what I'm going to do is, uh, while, before I do that, is I have the uh, Ultra Pure White uh, number 7450 here um, from Bear. Um, and this is an interior satin enamel, uh, and it's a stain blocking paint and primer all in one. So I'm just kind of mixing it up in here before I uh, mix it in my two to one mix. So it doesn't look it, but I'm here. Uh, it doesn't look very well because the table that I'm here isn't level. It looks like I'm about two and a half. Um, it was two. Actually, it was one right here. So I'm going to go up to the same distance just above the two on this side. Okay, everything is prepped now. I got all the, at least a majority of the dust and everything removed from the pieces. Now the time is just to go ahead and whitewash it. Uh, as I just mentioned, I got a one-to-one -one mix, so 50-50 paint and water. And then I'm, what I'm gonna see, you're going to see me doing is just paint on one side. And then I'm going to go ahead and immediately wipe it off. And then go to the other side, immediately wipe it off. And then I'm going to let them dry, flip them over, and do it again. And that should be it. I might have to do a little bit of uh, touch up on the middle um, because on the previous ones I've done, it's a little bit extra white here on the center. So I may have to put a very thin coat in here and just let that dry. Um, but you know what? That's just going to be how you guys choose to do it on yours on whether it, you know, what you feel matches best to what you guys are trying to achieve. All right. I got a plan in place. It's just time to send it. So now that these are dry, just let these, uh, basically what I can do, especially since it's outside and just a beautiful day again, like 70 to mid seventies right now. Um, uh, they were able to dry in about 30 minutes before I can proceed from one side to the next. And, uh, before we proceed to the next step, um, but first I'm just kind of checking them out to make sure there's nothing that, uh, uh, any major things that I may need to address before we put the uh, top coat on. And it looks like they're good. So let's move on to the next step. All right, so the last step we're going to be doing is I'm going to be using this uh, spray polyurethane. Um, it's going to require four coats. Um, and in between the third and the fourth coat, I need to take a 220 grit sanding block and go ahead and just kind of scuff it up one last time. Um, and then uh, after that, put on the last coat. So what we're going to see me do is going to be pretty easy. We're going to go ahead and just do um, all coats and uh, we'll throw it in time lapse and make it go fast for you. But there will be a approximately 15 minute wait in between every coat for me because on a nice day like this, it says it's going to be 30 minutes, but my experience has shown that it's only going to take about 15. All right, let's send it. Right.
The next step, uh, it, not too difficult, especially if you have power tools. Uh, um, if you actually be easier, if the hardware that you're putting on is the same that you were just using, then it's going to be real easy at this point. Um, however, myself, the pattern lines up pretty close, but not completely. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is uh, use the power tools um, to go ahead and assist me uh, and putting these in. Alright, I got my drill out here because it's time to drill the new holes for the handles. Uh, and here's my handle that I'm going to be using. Uh, and this is the jig that you can buy from any big box store. I got mine from Home Depot. And it came with the 13 16th drill bit alongside it. So uh, if you don't have the drill bit that comes with some of these jigs, 3 16ths is the hole you want to drill. Alright, so since mine lines up with the 3 inch marks, I uh, don't know how well this is showing. Um, but it says three inches right there. It's kind of hard for me to see, so it's probably hard for you to see. Um, I'm going to go ahead and put, I have this now squared up. I'm going to go ahead and put you on the tripod. So when you see me drilling, I'm going to be drilling the holes that are centered to within this door on each door. All right, let's go ahead and send it. All right, here they are, finished product. This is definitely a far improvement from the all white cabinets that I had just prior to sanding these down. Now I will say, as you can kind of see, I did um, off the camera before the polyurethane, go down with just lights in and on the 150 grit to give me a little bit more character around the edge excuse me, around the edges. Um, and the reason why I went around the edges and not necessarily on the inside is because the outside is actually real wood. The inside is some sort of engineered wood. So I was okay to keep that sort of covered, but uh, this is definitely some real character on the outside. Now that you, you know, this is definitely, there are better options out there if you're willing to pay for them, you know, for the amount of just spending some money on paint and some hardware this is definitely a great improvement for my cabinets um, from where they originally stood 
All right, so that's gonna go ahead and wrap up this video. I did wanna add a little bit to hit the end in here and let you know that if you were gonna do all of this from the beginning to the end, those two doors, you should probably at least, for that size of doors, you should probably plan for at least two days because doing the paint stripping and the paint removal, uh, depending on how much paint you had on there originally, can take quite a bit of time. It's because you gotta put down the paint thinner, let it sit, remove it, and you're probably gonna have to do that a few times. So then you wanna let it basically dry completely before you even get to think of painting um, so it's best to just let that do one day and then you pick up to where I was today um, so hopefully I was able to give you guys a good option on if you don't necessarily want to go and uh, pay money for some new cabinet doors and you got some um, wood doors underneath uh, and as a matter of fact I'll be honest I did not know that I had do the wood doors underneath or a combination of wood and en engineered wood um, but uh, as soon as I found that out I whitewashed became an option um, and I figured you know just for the price of paint and everything and like I said the hardware it wasn't that much money about two days and then you're gonna go ahead and uh, easily whitewash some cabinet doors now if you're gonna do your entire kitchen just I would um, keep in mind those were pretty small doors so depending on how big your doors are that might be a pretty big project you're taking on um, but uh, if you got the time and you got the resources then go ahead and send it but anyways thank you for watching I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you on the next one